Well, cup of tea with Troy. Cheers. I uh, wanted to do a little bit of a catch up. I felt moved to um, record a little video for you for a number of reasons. The first one being that the British singer songwriter Terry Hall died yesterday, which was strange for me because I'd just been listening actually quite recently to um, some of Terry Hall's solo stuff. I've always quite liked him as an artist, particularly through the 90s when he was doing his solo stuff. I wasn't a huge fan initially of his band The Specials, which was how he came to prominence in the first place with songs like Gangster and Ghost Town and so on, although Ghost Town is a, is a great song. I'm listening now retrospectively to, um, <clears throat> to The Specials and there's some great stuff there for sure. I actually quite liked him as a solo artist and actually as a solo artist in the UK, he was less popular. You know, he didn't really sell huge numbers of records, but he did some really great songs uh, on his solo album Home. There's some great tracks. He did a band with Dave Stewart from the Eurythmics for a while called Vegas, and they did some good stuff. He was in the band Funboy 3. They've got some good tracks. He just did some solid, decent stuff. He wrote some things with Ian Brody from the... Ian Brody? <laughs> I should say it properly. From the Lightning Seeds. Just, you know, just a decent songwriter. Good vocalist. And he had this kind of like melancholic sort of air about him, which I always found quite appealing. Anyway, so look, what's the point of all this? Well, he died yesterday, age 63, which for some of you watching this may seem like it's quite old, but... It actually really isn't. It's actually really, really quite young. And um, I don't know what the cause of death was, but regardless, RIP to Terry Hall. And it's one of those things, it just kind of got me a bit, I suppose. And again, I, I'm saying this in the context of, I'm not a huge, huge fan, but he has been somebody who's been around for all of my life, really, as somebody who's listening to records. And... I have liked and been listening to a lot of his solo stuff just recently. So the fact that he died came as a bit of a shock. And I suppose it's the old, you know, memento more thing, isn't it really? It's just another reminder that our our time on this mortal coil is, is very limited. And you never know when it's going to be the time to go, right? You never know. I mean, 63, as I say, very young. You know, I've got friends in their 60s. I've got, obviously, family members in their 60s, in their 70s, you know? Uh, 63 is... It's pretty young to go, you know? And I'm sure if he'd have lived longer, he would have had a lot more music to make. He would have had a lot more to put out there. And, you know, it's just like that. Overnight, it's gone. So that's got me sort of thinking about mortality... And I suppose one's own limited lifespan on this planet and what we're here to, to do. And the fact is, you know, if you're like me and you've been a libertine for most of your life, and you've, you haven't really scratched the surface of your potential in many ways. You've just sort of left it. And there's this manana kind of, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll be fine. I'll do it tomorrow. You know, um, you have to understand that tomorrow may never come. You know, it really it really may not. And as much as we say this on videos and as much as Tusk and I are always talking about this when we do live streams saying, you know, you're going to die, so you may as well just go for it and whatever it may be for you. It's very hard often to actually internalize that and actually understand it as being true. But it is true. And I think sometimes when prominent people, even people that we don't know personally, go... It brings it home to us. Like when the Queen died, for example, earlier this year, I did a video about the Queen dying. Now, I'm not a huge, massive royalist or anything like that, but the Queen dying affected me, and I think it affected many, many millions of people in the UK, even people who, for the most part, probably aren't so bothered about the royal family or anything like that. And the other person this year was, um, of course, Andy Fletcher from the band... Depeche Mode, so people who've been following me for some time will know perhaps that I'm a big fan of Depeche Mode. I've loved them since I was a teenager. I think they've done some fantastic stuff. Um, and yeah, Andy Fletcher died early this year. I think he was about 60 as well. And, you know, left a big hole in the band. And now they're going to make another record, which, funnily enough, is called Memento More, the new Depeche Mode record next year. 
is going to be called Memento Mori, so very much in this theme. And they're carrying on as a duo, but, you know, I mean, it starts to get real, guys. It starts to get real. I mean, I'm in my late 40s now. And of course, look, you can have people die around you at any age, and people have deaths in their close family and with partners and stuff when they're a lot younger than me. But it starts to get real when people that you've grown up with and people that you've been aware of and have been in the sort of periphery of your life since you were a kid start to drop off, you know? Um, I'm not sure I've got any amazingly intelligent, overarching lesson to bring out from that today, except just to say, you know, this is just a vlog, really. I'm just sort of quite reflective. I felt a little bit down today and the last couple of days. I don't know why, really. It might be to do with the weather. You know, I mean, funnily enough, for, for a change, I don't actually have jet lag because I've been in London for a... Uh, a little while so I actually don't have jet lag so I don't have that excuse but I've been feeling a little bit sort of um, down is the wrong word not really down but just sort of like a bit demotivated a bit sluggish you know and all that kind of thing and but but there again you know things like this are a timely reminder that the time is very short you know I want to write a book a new book which the plan is to get that out next year you know I've got to get on with that I want to write a novel I want to get that out next year as well got to get on with that there are other projects that I'm going to be working on. You know, time is very short because if we have any... And I actually don't believe in legacy anyway. I don't believe that, you know, legacy is meaningful for the individual because you're going to be dead. So even if I somehow wrote the greatest novel ever written in the English language, you know, the truth is I'm going to... And it, it became wildly acclaimed after my life ended, it would be meaningless to me because I'm not going to be conscious of that fact. So legacy itself, I don't think is really something to aspire to particularly, but I do think that while we're alive, while we're here, we should be trying to do something that's at least in some way meaningful. And I guess in my own small way with the work that I'm doing, you know, with the dating stuff and sharing my experiences on here, there's at least an attempt to help other people, you know? There's at least an attempt to think, okay, well, I've experienced certain things. I'm passing them on to you. Maybe that can be helpful in some in some small way, right? Um, but artistically, I, I definitely want to do more. And it, it makes you think, you know, we just don't have the time that we think we do to rest on our laurels, okay? The other thing that happened recently was I went to a district in London uh, that I've not been to for quite a long time, a couple of years probably, I've not really been to this area. Because it's an area that I used to spend time in <clears throat> with an ex-girlfriend of mine. And we used to, she lived near there, and we used to go shopping there, and we passed through to go to the, uh, to get on the subway, you know, the tube, and so on and so forth. And it's a place that, and also as well, there was a couple of times we had kind of breakups, and then we would meet up in this particular area, and I would say my sorries and bring her my flowers purchased in the local garage um, and try and make it up with her and we get back together. So it has a resonance for me. It has memories for me that are impregnable. And I went back to this place to actually to go and work with a client. And I didn't really think much of it because you think, well, look, I mean, it's been a few years. Uh, I'm just going to go and work with this client. It's no big deal, whatever. And it really wasn't. You know, I went there and I worked with the client and then we were having a coffee and then we, we finished our meeting and I then went to, uh, to, to, to go and leave and I walked through this, uh, this area and I was looking around and it was just strange. It just suddenly, the emotion just suddenly hit me, you know? And what I found is that there were there were actually tears forming in my eyes. And it's strange because I don't cry very often. And I think when you do cry, sometimes it, it kind of starts differently, doesn't it? Sometimes it can start with this kind of sob and you just you're, you're just like over overcome and you start to sob and it starts to all come out. And this time for me, that didn't happen. It, it was strange. Just the, the tears just started to form in my eyes and I'm walking around and you could I could just feel the, the it welling up and the liquid coming down and I wasn't sort of like sobbing or anything I wasn't like crying at that point but but the, the tears were starting to come out and I was like geez this is um I didn't expect this 
So I had a little bit of a wander around and my eyes are getting kind of misty because the tears are, you know, forming and stuff. Um, and I was just looking at some stuff and I went into a store where we used to go, just to like a food store, whatever. And obviously all the Christmas decorations are up as well and they're playing the Christmas songs and stuff like that, which I suppose doesn't help. And um, it just built up on me, it built up and, um, you know, and then I started to, you know, I started to sort of, started to come out and I had to take a bit of a moment and then I, I walked out of this store and I just sort of wandered blindly for a little bit and people must have been looking at me like who the hell is this guy like wandering around like a zombie <laughs> um, and so then I, I thought well look I'm, I need to get out of here there's no point in prolonging this so I went to the uh, subway and I got on the the subway train and got out of the area and then I went to meet some friends and you know, it kind of passed over, but again, and, th and this relates back to some videos that I put out earlier this year, it, it just reminds me that, um, you know, in a life that has probably been demarcated by, some might say, somewhat shallow relationships, where I probably haven't fully revealed myself to the other person, and I probably, I mean, maybe that person's revealed themselves to me, or maybe I haven't chosen to accept that or I've been quite sort of avoidant I think is the is the term um, I think in a life that's been demarcated by relationships like that this one I think had a a depth to it a sort of reality to it that perhaps has been absent or, or, or perhaps I've tried to avoid let's say in other relationships that, that I've had. And I think it was real, for me at least. You know, I can't speak for the other person. I, I'm not inside anybody else's head, so I can't say how it, how it was. And, you know, and, th and there again, you know, sometimes I think back on this same person and this same situation, and I think, well, how, how well did I really, how well did I really know her? You know, did she really feel the same about me as, as I believe now that I felt about her? And, um, the truth is, I, I don't know the answer to that, I, and I probably will never know the answer to that. And, and in a sense, that doesn't really matter because we're not talking about anyone else here. I'm talking about myself and my own, I suppose, at, at least capacity to, to love in some shape or form, right? You know, and I, I sometimes think that... Um, I, I suppose I've sometimes thought that I don't have that capacity or at least that I've suppressed it, um, probably to avoid potential emotional pain and stuff like that and I think that this little incident shows that I do have that capacity that I am at least a human being among other human beings which is I guess nice to know you know but but it, it also harks back to some of the videos I was making earlier in the year when I was saying you know you, you just in this space it's very popular to say yeah well you know they're every, they're all replaceable and there's a billion people there's billions of people on the planet and you'll always find another woman and there'll always be somebody else and you know don't get don't get hung up and don't get one itis and all this kind of stuff and in many ways all that kind of all that stuff is true that that is true i mean logically you know if i get on a plane and i go to istanbul right the, the streets are crammed with people there are just you know there there are billions of people on this planet okay there are billions of, of women on this planet there are billions of people one could get into a relationship with okay so mathematically that's absolutely true but at the same time i think there are people that you just have a deeper connection with you know that you just for whatever reason it is it, it dna you know, on whatever primordial level, you just have a deeper connection with, you just have a deeper resonance with. And I don't think you can replace those people, you know? And I was seeing a post on Instagram the other day and it was sort of saying, you fall in love three times in your life. And, um, you know, and there was this, it had some pithy like text there, which I didn't bother to read. But um, I think that that's probably true. Robbie Williams once said, you, you get, a certain number in your life when you're born, you get a certain number of sex tokens. It's like, right, you're gonna have sex X number of times. Okay, here you go. And then you get a far smaller number of like love tokens. That is to say, people that you you fall in love with and there's something there, there's something real there. You get a very small number, maybe two, three, one, you know, whatever it is. And I don't know that they're replenished. I don't think they're replenished, really. Um, and sometimes I think, well, that's it for me. You know, and it, I don't mean I'll never meet anybody else, or I'd never be in a relationship or whatever, you know, I mean, you know, I, but, but I just mean, can I ever 
reach that depth of feeling for somebody again? Um, and do I even want to? And um, the answer is I don't really know, to be honest. Uh, I have to say that in the last, you know, you spend, you, you, you can get into a lifestyle and you spend time traveling around and it's like, oh, there's this girl in, there's this girl in uh, uh, Istanbul and then there's this girl in, in Warsaw and there's this girl over here and blah, blah, blah. And it's all very sort of shallow and fun and sexy and superficial and exciting and all this kind of thing. But also it can be, I'm not saying it always is, I'm not saying it's a bad lifestyle to have, but it, it, is, it doesn't have the level of depth. And I don't know whether I can ever experience that level of depth again. And as I say, I don't really know that I want to experience that level of depth again, even if it were possible. So that then leaves you in a sort of a, um, a bind, doesn't it? Because then you're in the situation of like, well, okay, so what is the what is the end game here? What is the next step? What is the what is the game plan? Um, and again, I don't really know. I think that the the big difficulty I can teach guys to to become proficient socially. I can teach guys how to get better results. You know, with dating, that side of the thing is actually, in a way, as much as it, it, it's a a huge problem for, and I respect that for a lot of people who watch this content. In a way, that's the easy part. The more challenging part, or for me at least, is, is, is what you do then after that, okay? And I think relationships in this world are becoming more difficult. You know, not just for me. I was reading some stuff on Instagram the other day. Nothing to do with the men's online help, self-help space or anything like that. It was just a regular sort of mainstream Instagram post. And um, so many people were writing underneath this post how difficult it is to find meaningful, lasting relationships now with the way that the world is. And, um, you know, so there's a, there's a lot of people who are having trouble with this stuff out there. So that's it for now. Slightly disjointed ramblings, but hopefully you got something out of it. Coming up to the Christmas season, which is good. Going to be seeing some family. I'll be doing some more content, obviously, before then. May do a live stream around Christmas as well to touch base with you guys. And, yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for the support this year. And if you've got any thoughts on this video, I'd love to hear it. So stick it in the comments below. Uh, if you would like to jump on a free call with me to talk about your own situation, if any of this resonates with you, then you can do that on my Calendly link below. And yeah, I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.